Hi, I'm Jennifer of Celtic Knot Crochet, and today in this video, I'll be showing you how to make the Celtic Shamrock Wall Hanging. This is an easy pattern that uses basic crochet stitches. I'll share with you each step of the way how to make each piece of the shamrock, how to crochet the background, and how to add the fringe and the hanger. So make sure that you click subscribe, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, and let's get started. First, let me share with you the supplies that you'll need to make the Celtic Shamrock wall hanging. I want to make sure you know that down in the description you'll see a list of all the supplies with links of where to purchase them, and you'll also find the written free pattern for this design on my blog at CelticKnotCrochet.com. You'll also find the diagrams that you need to help you make these Celtic knots. They are free, downloadables, and printables at CelticKnotCrochet.com. So the supplies you'll need, I used a medium weight acrylic green yarn. I found this at Joann's around Christmas time and I've been saving it for a fun project. So this is Joann's acrylic yarn, big twist, twinkle, because it has some uh, metallic thread in it. But you pick whatever you like from your stash, a pretty green. And then I used for the shamrock, I used one of my favorite yarns, this is Symphonia by Omega, and this particular color is warm white. Uh, but you might want to use a yellow or a bright white. You choose. I thought this softer white went well with this shade of green. Then you'll also need an eye hook, 5.5 millimeter, and you'll need an F hook, 3.75 millimeter. You'll also need a jumbo tapestry needle, some nice sharp scissors to cut your fringe. I also will be using a glue gun and glue stick, so a hot glue gun. And then you'll also need a dowel, and I'll show you. It's right inside here. You can find these at your local craft store. Just a simple wooden dowel uh, to put along the top of your project so it hangs nicely. We'll go over the supplies you'll need to help you weave the knots when we get to that section of the video. If you'd like to skip ahead to that part, again you can see a bunch of timestamps in the description below. So let's get started! First we're going to work on the backing rectangle for the Celtic shamrock wall hanging. You'll want to take the larger hook, size I, 5.5 millimeter, and chain 39. Now I'm going to work a base row in single crochet to give me a nice straight edge for the bottom part of the wall hanging. So I'm going to turn my chain over. This is the front of the chain with all the V's. I'm going to turn my chain over and now see all these bumps and I'm going to skip the first chain right here and I'm going to work into that next chain but working in the back bar and I'm going to just do simple single crochets all the way across. So I'll zoom this in a little bit more so you can see. So the back bar of the chain, I use this a lot in my Celtic Knot projects. And we'll be using it again when we make the Celtic Knots for this project as well. And it creates a nice bottom that looks just like the top. Here you can see I've completed this first row of single crochet. And now I am going to chain two and start working the pattern stitch. I'm going to turn my row and I'm going to work in this first stitch right here. I'm going to insert my hook under both loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's a single crochet. Then I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to work a double crochet in that same stitch. 
double crochet, yarn over, put my hook in, pull up a loop, and now pull through two, pull through two. And this right here is called a shell. So you have a single crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet. Next, I'm gonna skip two stitches, and then I'm gonna do that shell again in the next stitch. Single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And I'm gonna repeat that across. Skip the next two, and then single crochet, chain one, double crochet. Here I've gone all the way across with my shell and skipping two stitches in between and that brings me to my last stitch and I'm just going to put my hook in to that last single crochet and do one more single crochet at the end. Now I'm going to chain two, turn my work, and now I'm going to work the same thing in every row from here on out. So I'm going to find that shell and if again I use my fingers in my non-dominant hand, it helps me find the shell right here. So there's the double crochet, the chain one, and the single crochet. And I'm going to work the shell in each of the chain one spaces across. So I put my hook in, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through two for a single crochet, chain one, and double crochet. And now I'm going to go into the next one. And again, I'm feeling it with my fingers. You need to be careful. This is not where you want to work. Here's that single crochet from the previous shell. I don't want to work in this space. I want to work in the chain one space that comes next between the double crochet and the single crochet. I love the color and the sparkle of this yarn, but sometimes if you've chosen a darker yarn like this one, it can be hard to see your stitches. So use your sense of touch to help. And I feel, I squeeze the stitch like this, and that chain one just pops right open for me. And I can work this stitch quickly across. And i keep on working into all those chains, one spaces. I've gone all the way across the row, and this is my last shell right here, the double crochet, the chain one that I worked into, and then the single crochet, and then here's that chain two turning chain. So I'm going to end the row by doing a single crochet in that last single crochet of the last shell. And then I chain two, turn my work and do the same thing again. Work the single crochet, chain one, double crochet in each chain one across and then when I get to the end single crochet in that last single crochet of the last shell. You see it here? There's the double, chain one, single and I'm going to put a single crochet there and that helps uh, keep the stitch and the sides even. And total you should have across your whole project here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen shells. Now you're going to continue this stitch until you have a rectangle that looks like this. And then we are going to work on the motif that will be attached to this backing. Once you've completed your base backing rectangle, you're going to want to work single crochet edging on both of the sides. And you'll start in the corner and work your way down the side. Now, what I did right there is I joined with a single crochet. So I can show you that again. So right here in the corner, the last stitch of that first row, I put my slip knot on my hook, insert my hook in the corner in the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on my hook, 
yarn over, pull through two. And I evenly space my single crochets along the edge of the rectangle. And that gives a nice finished look on both sides. And I'll do that with the right side facing so I have this nice edge. And I'll go all the way up to where the top is and I will put my casing. Before we can attach the motifs to our backing, we're going to want to first make a pocket or what you call a casing for the dowel that will go across the top. So I know this is the right side because you could see that's the right side of that first row I did of single crochets. See how the back, the single crochets, you see all the bumps? So that's the wrong side. This is the right side. So I'm going to turn my rectangle over and I left a nice long yarn tail at the top and I can see I have right here one, two rows of the stitch pattern and I'm going to turn it over like so. And if you'd like, you can use some clips to hold it in place or some of those pins that you got together for weaving the knots. And this just helps your project stay nice and even. And then I'm going to whip stitch with this yarn tail and I'm going to pick up a loop on the back of the stitches here and go right through the top of the stitch. And I'll do that all the way down, making sure I go at least once in every stitch. So it'll be nice and even. And that is going to create a pocket for the dowel to go into. And by putting a dowel across the top, you'll have a nice firm edge and your wall hanging will hang nicely on the wall and it won't crumple on the sides. Now for the Celtic knot hearts, you're going to want to use the smaller hook, the size F, 3.75 millimeter, and the smaller, thinner yarn. This is cotton yarn, size 3 or DK weight. And I'm going to chain 105 chains. So you can do it by doing 10 or 20 at a time and using a stitch marker so you don't lose your place. And then after you've done 105, you're going to, again, like we did at the beginning of the backing rectangle, you're going to take the chain and turn it over so you see the back side with all the bumps. You're going to skip this first chain and you're going to work single crochets into the back bump of the chain or the back bar. And you're going to work that all the way across the chain so you have this nice thin about a quarter inch a little bit more than that maybe three-eighths of an inch wide crocheted cord and it will look like this and it's going to be approximately if you measure it it's going to be about 22 inches long and you're going to want to make three of these because there are three Celtic knot hearts in the project. So make three of these cords. To create the cord for the stem part of the shamrock you're going to want to chain 85 chains. And then we're going to do a different stitch, but we're still going to work in the back bar of the chain. So this is the front of the chain. We're going to turn it over. We're going to skip the first chain 
and then we're going to put our hook into that back bar of the next chain yarn over pull through the chain and through the loop on your hook so that's a slip stitch and we're going to work slip stitches all the way down the chain of 85 so we'll have 84 slip stitches and your cord should be about 16 to 17 inches long and you'll see that it comes out a little bit thinner than the other cord we did for the hearts but it still has the pretty double braided look where you have the top and the bottom look the same once you've completed this cord set it to the side and we'll be ready to weave the Celtic knots now we're ready to weave the Celtic knots so first you're going to need a piece of cork board or foam core poster board uh, mine's a little big for this project but you want to make sure it's at least five to eight inches square the cork board is about a quarter of an inch thick and then an optional idea is that you can add about a half inch of styrofoam underneath but you don't have to do that I like to do that so my pins don't push through to my work surface. Then you're going to want to print out the Celtic Knot diagram, which you can find at CelticKnotCrochet.com. And it has all that you need here to make one of the hearts successfully. And then you'll want about 10 to 20 straight sewing pins. And I'm going to pin the diagram here on the cork board to keep it in place and I'm gonna look at my diagram first for a few minutes before I start weaving I want to take a close look at where to begin so right here at the asterisk is where I'm going to begin weaving and then I want to take my finger and follow along the heart path so my brain gets used to where it's going okay and you see here are all the arrows telling you which way you should be going so you don't jump onto another path or go the wrong way and now I have my cords completed and I'm gonna start with the end that does not have yarn tails so this is technically the end of the cord and this here without the yarn tails is the beginning of the cord now if you look at this crocheted cord you can uh, steam block it if you like but see how it has this slight natural curve to it so if you are left-handed yours is going to curve the other direction and that's totally okay but then I recommend you using the diagram for left-handers you can use this one for right-handers uh, but since your project will curve in the opposite direction just make it easier on yourself and print out the left-hander diagram so I'm going to take the beginning of the cord and line it up there with the asterisk and pin it in place and then I'm just gonna follow along the way the arrows go and pin whenever I feel I need to And when I come back around to where I already pinned, I remove the pin, put the cord over, and put the pin back in. And I just continue to follow. Now I'm getting to a trickier part. Now we're going to peek at the diagram and see that I need to go under this cord. But if I peek here, I can see I'm going to go over this one. So Celtic knots are all a series of over and under weaving. And make sure my cord is facing. This is the right side up of my cord. And now I continue around this way. I'm going to peek and I need to go over here. But then I need to go under here and then over again. So I'm going to go over, under, over. And I like to put my pins in at all the bends. That way my cord doesn't move too much on me.
And now I have my final pass here. I'm going to go under, over, under, and then over. And I should have a little bit left over that I'm going to tuck underneath right there. But if I don't have any left over, I'll show you what to do. So under, over, under. Okay, so it will just right up to that edge and I need a little bit extra. So what I do is now that the knot is mostly finished, I remove some of the pins and I make some adjustments. So I'm going to pin this end down so it doesn't move on me. And I'm going to tug on here and just take up some slack. See how I have a little slack in the cord? Shift the pins again. See that little bit of slack is all I need to give me that little bit at the end. So I just shift that slack around through all the cords, remove the pins, and there I have enough now to go over the edge. Did you see how I did that? So most likely your project will come out a little bit off of the length and that's totally fine. You just do that little uh, trick I just showed you about finding the slack and working it all the way to the end. Now if yours is a lot longer it is very easy. You just undo the stitches here and back it up till you have two or three extra and then discard the remnants of the yarn. That's it. So that's why we put that end of the cord here at the end of the weaving. That way if yours is way too long you can just undo the stitching and you'll be all set without too much extra. Now that we have the heart all set I'm going to take out the pins and pin them across some of the crossings. Definitely the beginning and the end, like so. And then maybe this one here in the middle. Since this is a small, simple knot, it doesn't need a lot of pins to hold it together. And I'm going to set that aside so that I can either sew all these crossings on the wrong side of the heart or I can glue them. For a decorative project like this I like to use hot glue because it goes much quicker and this isn't going to be worn or washed. So now I'm going to remove this diagram and I'm going to put the second diagram in place. Diagram number two, this is the stem for the shamrock motif. Here is my completed cord, remember, with all the slip stitches and the same thing. This is the end with the yarn tails, so I'm going to begin with the other side. And same as before, as you can see, this has a natural curve to it. So I want to use this diagram for right-handers. If you're a left-hander, yours is going to curl the opposite direction. So just use and print out the left-hander diagram number two. Before we start weaving, we'll want to find where we're going to start, the asterisk, and we'll follow the arrows again just to help our brain get used to where we're going. This knot is a little more complicated than the hearts, but it's still not that difficult. So I'm going to put the beginning here at the asterisk and pin it in place and follow the arrows, pinning as I go. 
I'm going to work my way up this way and I peek at the diagram and I see I need to go under. And I'm going to use this pin to just pin that in place. Now as I head down this way, I'm going to go under here and then over here. Put a pin here at the top. So under and then over like so. And now here's where it's a little tricky. I'm going to go around this way and I'm going to pass over where I started because we want to hide that cord in so I know it's going to be underneath where I'm headed now. Then I'm going to go under this one, over this one, and then under that one. So over, under, over, under. And I'm going to remove the pin from the beginning. And place the pin back down. And continue following the diagram with my overs and unders. Okay, and now we're coming down the home stretch. We have just a little bit more and we'll be at the end. So I'm going to go over, then under, then over. And then I'll meet back up with where I began. Shift this pin. Like so. Now, right here you can see it's more square. And that's just kind of a guide. When you go to attach this to your backing rectangle, you can attach it so it kind of comes out more like a square than a curve. But it's up to you. I just thought the stem would look better that way. And I'm going to put these yarn tails underneath, like so. And there we go. We meet up with the beginning. All good Celtic knots. Sometimes you have to adjust them. So I remove the pins and just tweak some of the openings a little bit. And then as we did before, I'm going to pin across on some of the crossings to hold my knot in place. Definitely want to pin something across here at the beginning. Remove all the other pins. One thing that's a little different with the stem is because both cord ends meet up in the same place. I am going to use my yarn needle here to sew them together. So here are my two cord ends and I'm going to work through both sides of the cord and just to join those together. And then I want to make sure that when I glue it down it is behind the other cord so I don't see that join on the front. So I'll do that right now. Put a little dot there. And now that part's secured and I'll weave these ends in along this wrong side of the cord so you can't see. And again, like the heart, I'm not going to uh, secure everything just yet. I'll wait so it's a little movable and adjustable when I put it on the backing.
Now we are ready to attach all the Celtic knot motifs to our backing rectangle. And I just do it by eyeballing. So I start with the first heart and I'm going to place it right in the center going left to right and then oh maybe two inches from the top but I might adjust that as I put the other pieces in and then I'll lay this one right here and this one right here And then I'm going to add my stem piece right here. And then I'm going to pin each motif in place. So as I glue everything on, I want to make sure that they don't shift because once it's glued down, it's not going anywhere. And I have approximately the same distance between the top and the bottom. And now I love to turn my work so I'm not reaching across. Turn it so it's handy to the hand I'm using. And I just put a few little dots on the main parts of each heart just to begin with that right on the those two humps of each heart I can always add more glue or more stitching you might want to uh, stitch your hearts on Just a small amount of glue. This will keep tack it in place and then I can do some more heavy duty gluing once I have them tacked where I want them. And you'll just continue in this manner gluing the motifs to your backing. And then we'll have one more step after this to add the edging cord around the entire leaf section and maybe even around the bottom section. And we'll also be adding some fringe to the bottom. Another tip I wanted to mention was that when I glue the bottom point of each heart, I make sure that it comes to more of a point. I, I don't want it like that. I want it to really look like a nice heart. So I push it together with my fingers, put some glue on, and then as I attach it, I put it into that nice pointy shape, and that really helps it look finished. See how they all have the nice pointy heart bottom like that. So the last cord we're going to make is the cord that's going to go around the shamrock leaves. And this is made just like the cord for the stem. You're going to chain longer though. So you want to chain 114 chains and then you're going to work into the back bar of the chain like we did before. Here's the back bar and we're going to work a slip stitch. Yarn over and pull through everything. And you want to do this nice and loosely so that you have a nice open look to your stitches. And when you're finished, you should have a cord that measures approximately 24 inches long. Uh, if you'd like, because slip stitches tend to be tight, you might wanna just stretch it a little bit. And we're gonna take this cord and we're going to glue it around our shamrock hearts, right around here. And Again, you can sew it on if you'd like. 
And if you see here, I'm going to start with the beginning of the cord that does not have any yarn tails because there is a natural curve to my cord. And I want to use that curve to go around the bumps of the heart. And you can pin it in place if you'd like before you start gluing. But I know I want to tuck the end in under the stem knot right there. And then I'm going to work it around the heart like so. Just snugging it right up next to everything. Now, I'll let you know a little secret. If your cord ends up too long, because this is the end with the yarn tails, you can undo some of your stitches and then you can undo the beginning part of the chain so that your cord end ends right where you want it like so. Okay? And I would I'm going to thread these through probably to the wrong side of my backing rectangle here and then I'll just use the glue gun and glue this all the way around. To make the fringe along the bottom of the wall hanging, you'll want to cut several pieces of the base rectangle, backing rectangle yarn, and you want to cut about 11 inches and then take three lengths and fold them in half so you have a loop on one end and the yarn tails on the other. And then you'll take the larger hook and insert the hook into every third stitch. So you're just going to skip two stitches and then do the next fringe. You put the loop on the hook, use the hook to pull the loop through the stitch, and then wrap the tails around and pull through that loop you just pulled through, and then tighten it, like so. And then I'll do the next one. I'll skip two stitches and do the next one in the third stitch. And I'll work my way across, and when they're all finished, I'll use some sharp scissors to trim all these ends here so they're all the same length. Now when you're ready to put the dowel through the casing you made on top, you'll want a thin dowel about quarter of an inch or less thick and I cut mine to approximately nine inches because my total width is about nine and a half. So I wanted it a little bit shorter because I didn't want it to stick out the ends. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie on about a 20 to 30 inch length of the yarn that matches. Nice and tight in a double knot. And of course this moves around. So what I like to do is use the hot glue to just put a little stopper right there and I let that cool and that'll prevent this from sliding off and my wall hanging from falling off the wall and I'll clip that yarn tail. So then I'm going to insert the dowel through the casing that I made on top. Just do it gently, have it go through to the other end. Now, this is where it's optional. If Again, if you want your dowel to show, then you wouldn't do this step. But since I want to hide my dowel inside the top, I'm going to take the end of the yarn tail, put it on my yarn needle, and then I'm going to come up through the top of the casing like that. So now my hanger is definitely invisible. So it's just coming up out the top and it's about an inch in from this side. So I'm going to go back down 
about an inch from the other side through the casing like so. See how long I want my hanger. About like that. Again, doesn't have to be exact. And then the only thing I have to do now is I push the dowel out on this side and carefully keeping it the length I like, tie another double knot on the other side. Cut the yarn tail and then put the stopper here with the hot glue. And I let that cool. And once that glue has cooled, I push the dowel inside the casing. You can't see it, but that nice hard dowel keeps a nice edge for the top of my project. And another little tip, if this is too long, you can always add another knot right inside there and that would shorten it. Or you can just peel off the hot glue and tie it so it's to your liking. And there you go. That's how you make the Celtic Shamrock wall hanging. I hope you enjoyed this project. Make sure to subscribe and give a thumbs up. And don't forget to watch the next Celtic Knot Crochet tutorial here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Happy crocheting!